Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Key to Football uh, with me, uh, Bobby Mays. I'm actually, uh, it's very exciting for me. Um, I've got my my brother on with me today. Uh, Joe, Joe, how are you today and ha- how's it going? Yeah, not too bad. Phoning in from New Zealand, so uh, reaching out to the, the British fans out there. <laughs> no, it's, uh, yeah, it's, we've been talking about this for a while because uh, essentially, you're a, you're just a bigger a football nut as me, um, and yeah, I mean, like we've been we've been talking about this for a little while, and like time zones are always a bit a bit messed up. So uh, really early morning one here for us, and yeah, I'm oh, really excited to to have you on, Joe. Um, how uh, has your how's your kind of couple of months been watching Liverpool? Has it been all right? Yeah, well, there's never been a, a better time to be a Liverpool fan, thankfully. Um, <laughs> it kind of har- harpens back to, you know, 2010. I was getting up at about 3.30 a.m. to watch uh, Roy Hodgson's Liverpool go out and get walked by Everton. Um, so it's been uh, it's been pretty good the last few years, particularly. Yeah, um, 100%. Yeah, I, I mean, getting up at 3.30 is still a net. You know, it's, it's tough, but... It's, it's worth it when you, you're pretty sure you're going to get a, a, some some result out of it from this Liverpool side at the moment. So Yeah, no, that's really true. Um, it is. It didn't feel like that for a long time, but uh, it is nice waking up uh, at those times now, I'm assuming, um, and, and better <laughs> yeah. better results. Uh, look, we're, we will talk a little bit about Liverpool today. I'll go through what the, the itinerary is today. So uh, nice short podcast, probably about 20, 25 minutes, something like that. Um, we are going to talk about the big, Big topic will be the Real Madrid um, City game that was um, last night. Amazing game, absolutely unbelievable. Can't wait to deep dive there. And um, also, we'll we'll do a bit of a pre match for the Liverpool Villarreal game tonight as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, super excited. Uh, before we start, uh, please do follow us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. You'll find this episode on YouTube at the Key to Football um it's getting a little bit um the the youtube is getting better and better uh so there is better designs going on you can follow it easier uh it looks great uh so please do follow us joe before we get into this game can i ask what liverpool top you are wearing right now because that looks like a great top is that the uh the 2000 and the champions league replica yeah it's the 2005 champions league winners candy cane liverpool shirt um, I can thank our brilliant Liverpool sporting mother for that one. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's my favorite, my favorite Liverpool shirt. Probably because it's like the, the game that got me, you know, from a fan into a mega fan for um, for the, like a lot of people, I suppose. Yeah, for sure. No, that was a that is a great game. I still remember that that day, that morning very well. I think it was the first day me and school. you were ever late for school. Um, <laughs> yeah. that. So uh, yeah, <laughs> look, we'll 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 go into the uh, City uh, Real Madrid game. So the City Real Madrid game was last night. It was a uh, four three. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne scored the quickest ever goal in the Champions League, and that was in two before two minutes. I think it was like one minute thirty. Uh, Jesus uh, Gabriel uh, Jesus uh, scored a eleventh minute goal, um, and then actually uh, it was two nil. You know, before fifteen minutes, and you thought, well, this could be seven six you know, 6-0. Benzema then gets a uh, 33rd minute goal out of nowhere, making it 2-1. Halftime came and went. Um, I thought, you know, this is going to be a cracker of a game. It got even better. Phil Foden then steps up and gets a 53rd minute goal. um, And Vinicius Junior gets a 55th minute goal. So like a minute afterwards, nuts. And then... um, uh, there was a. I thought the ref, the ref did really well actually in that game. Let a let a play on happen, um, and Bernardo Silva scored a cracker from outside the box. And finally, so that was four two in the you know last cup. Uh, I think it was last ten minutes. Uh, Benzema did a. Um, oh, it was an absolute dink of a penalty, wasn't it? Just a, the the balls to do that was uh, was obnoxious to make it four three. Uh, I mean, it was one of the best games of football I think you could ever watch. Um, as a neutral fan, the whole game was absolutely brilliant, wasn't it, Joe? What did you think? Yeah. So I mean. It took you about half an hour to read the scores out. That was how good the game was there. Um, from from my point of view, I got up 
you know, early I was getting ready for work and I, you know, I was like, oh, I'll start the game once I'm, you know, finished dressing up for work. So I got a, looked at the score, it was already 2-0 before, <laughs> before I even started. I was like, oh my. Um, and, you know, like most Liverpool fans, the thought of playing City in the final is quite a frightening prospect for us. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was, I was a little bit hesitant. I thought, oh, this could be a whitewash. It could, you know, do a lot of problems for the league. Um, but this Real Madrid side, there's something about them that they've refused to die. Um, they've done it the last few games. It's, it's, it's incredible. Um, and having, you know, watching the game, watching back the highlights, the first few goals, um, it was it was incredible the, the sort of football, attacking football that was coming out. Whilst the defensive side, there's a, <laughs> this is, there was, it wasn't the best defensive game I've ever seen. It was awesome to see two kind of galactic sides chucking everything that they had at each other. Um, and actually, if you look at the scorers, you can kind of see that the, the big names really did step up for the game, mm-hmm. which a for point. a neutral fan is super exciting. Um, Karen Benzema, the first name I, I probably should mention, um, four, I think it's 14 goals so far in the Champions League this season. And I think it's come from something like five XG goals, so expected goals. So yeah. he's not scoring easy goals, and that's including a penalty in there. Um, if you saw his first goal, uh, it's barely a chance. Yeah, it's, it is. He, he hooks his foot around and just puts it in. Um, I think, you know, like on a lot of people, a player that was underlooked uh, during the, the Ronaldo era of Ronaldo of Real Madrid and has come into his own and certainly, in my opinion, is the best player on the planet right now. Um, it's kind of one of those things that in the, in the, you know, Salah at the beginning of the season was amazing. Lewandowski has his moments, but the person that's deciding the biggest games of football in the world at the moment is Karim Benzema. I was at a Kareem the Dream, they, they're calling him in, uh, in Real Madrid. Um, but, you know, you also look at City, uh, he's, um, Kevin De Bruyne. I think he's up there ter- for player of the year always, as well. He always turns up in these sort of big games. He's, mm-hmm. you know, a bit of a Steven Gerrard reborn style player who seems to turn up and he can do everything that you want from a midfielder. Um, I was just thoroughly impressed, thoroughly impressed. And I think actually uh, looking ahead, uh, both teams kind of have can walk away quite happy with the result because Real Madrid, whilst they they, they never expect to, or want to lose, um, from being 2-0 down and then 3-1 down, kind of having the guts to come back into it, it's pretty much incredible. Against the City's outside, we know, everyone knows how good they are. And um, for City, having a lead to go to the second leg with, they can be pretty happy. And then as a Liverpool fan, and I can put the other side note, it's perfect because now everything's to play for and it's going to give, you know, something. Uh, we, could, we could be, you know, I, Villarreal or Liverpool could be seeing either team in the final at this point and it's going to get the league going as well. So for me, it was just the perfect mo- uh, morning of football um, and for sure. Yeah, no, what, what a what a sum up there, Joe. I think that was um, pretty perfect, to be honest. It, like Watching that game... I agree with you. I think it's, I always struggle to say who the best player on the planet is because I think it's now become, because we don't have Messi and because we don't have Ronaldo at their, their, their pinnacle, what it now comes down to who is the best player on the pit, uh, planet at this point in time? Because it seems to go through, there's like a group of like four or five players. Like I would go with Salah, De Bruyne, um, Benzema, um, oh, uh, but, but yeah, Mbappe, Bayern Munich, uh, Lewandowski, you know, those five maybe um, right now. I don't think you could put Haaland into it, but he will be. Um, Mm -hmm. And you put those five and what seems to happen is through the course of the year, those one of those five is the best five Mm -hmm. on the planet. Um, And the the thing that does make me lean towards Benzema is it's it feels like Benzema has been consistent the whole way through. Um, And he has been ruthless i genuinely don't know though i think i if i could put one player in in, in liverpool i think kevin de bruyne would be it like i just i oh, think yeah. he is i think he's the best i think he's you know because maybe it's because he's not a striker that we you know we don't put him in that 
that the bracket all the time is saying it and maybe it's because of his injuries but Kevin De Bruyne is unreal like he played I thought he was the best player on the pitch last night to be honest I just thought he was everywhere he was doing um through balls passes scoring goals I thought he was everywhere I thought he was an absolute monster um just to catch up as well like I thought Mares will Mares had a good game like it was really like weird Mares had a good game but I think he'll be kicking himself like for missing three guilty chances. And pretty much he was the player that could have made him go away with a three goal, um, three goal advantage. And you know what? He played great. He played great, but you know, just finishing those chances. And I think this is what the issue is with City in the Champions League, is that they don't they don't have that confidence yet to finish off a game in a Champions League and just be like, all right, we'll just you know, I thought maybe after the Atletico game, that was their big hurdle. I think this is actually going to be the big hurdle for them. I think Real Madrid, you kill Real Madrid in the semifinals. I think, you know, you are, you, you've done so. Real Madrid, the kings of the UCL. And it's, it's going to be, I think that they'll be, it's hard to say that they'll be disappointed because they won that game, but in a weird way, it doesn't feel like a loss for Real Madrid. I think everything's still open in that final place. It'll be nigh on impossible to go to um, the Bernabeu and not ha- and have an easy game. Um, Real Madrid will be in and around. There's no. The, I think the lucky thing for a City is there's no away goals either um, because that would be that'd be pretty bad um, if there was away goals. I think you'd, you'll almost sell Real Madrid and nearly favoured, um, but. Look, mess. It was unbelievable, wasn't it? Um, and I agree with you. For, from a Liverpool perspective, uh, from the Premier League perspective, all I wanted was to keep those players running the whole game. I just thought, oh, wow, this is going to be, you know, they they can't rest now. They they have to put forward a really good team for the next, uh, next, week's, next week's fixtures. And, you know, they, they can't really rest against... I can't even remember who they have. Do they have Wolves this weekend? Um, uh, uh, no, they've got um, Leeds, don't they? Yes, they have Leeds, yeah. Um, so, look, it's a, it's a pretty tough... A pretty tough day, to be honest. And I, I don't know. I'm, I'm fairly sure that... It's, that both of these are, are going to be... Um, it's going to be the biggest week of City's, City's career. Like, City's like well run i would say but yeah definitely i think there's going to be there might be a slip up um what do you think about um who's happier at the end of that game it's actually difficult to say i think at the end of the day c1 so they're going to go home happier but i don't think that means real madrid go home unhappy simply because they've come back so many times it's not it's 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 almost a joke how many times they've come back uh, actually, going straight back to what you're saying about Kevin De Bruyne being, you know, your best player in the, you know, at the moment, or you know, one of the most influential. I think before I said he's he's like Stephen Gerrard reborn, uh, and I think for most people they understand how big that is for a Liverpool fan to say that. I had um, some arguments for friends at one point comparing the two, and I thought, oh, you can't compare Stephen Gerrard to anyone. You know, he's a he's a great. But there's something about him in the big moments. He steps up. He can do anything he wants to that ball. He's quick. He's strong. Mm-hmm. Um, him staying fit is the most important thing for this City side. You saw it against Liverpool in the, the League Cup. Yeah. Uh, without him, they were a different beast from the team that really put us to our pace, put us to the sword a bit in the first half of the, um, the Premier League match we had. Um, another a talking point I had from the Real Madrid game, um, I was really, really impressed with the speed and the pace of Vinicius Jr. Um, it was quick, wasn't he? It, <laughs> That's that. But I, I should have was, probably gone into that second, um, their second goal because he did that out of nothing, didn't he? Absolutely out of he nothing. He turned, he turned it. Um, I think he nutmegged some player by, I don't know if it was on purpose, but with him, you can never know. And then you think there's 50 yards down the pitch, he's got to go. How, what's he going to do? Is he going to have to cut back? And he just he just blitzes the centre backs and gets that. And then you, you realise, oh wait, he's going to be. And then it's gone. Uh, it's, it's in. Um, and I think that's something he's really improved over the, from the last few years. Is his finishing is now it's 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 right up there. Um, so looking at those two teams, it was 
looking at Real Madrid, their attack and the some of their midfield play, it, whilst the midfield is a little bit inconsistent at the moment, um, when you have players like Modric in there, oh. anything can you know, anything can happen for you. I think they'll be looking for Casemiro to come back and kind of tighten up that defense. Um, David Alaba, uh, another important player for. They'll be hoping to go. I don't know the extent of their injuries, but they'll be hoping to get those players back for um, very soon. Um, and then another player I thought. Another player of the game that was very pivotal for me was the the Bernardo Silva goal, which was another outstanding piece of play. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, you know, there's talk of Courtois being one of the best goalkeepers in the world, but he shuts off a little bit there. I don't know if he you definitely does. You see yeah, it. he definitely um, does. Do you think that was because he thought it was a foul, or do you think like and he was just taken a bit yeah. back by it? I think he he turned off. Uh, he switched off. Um, and that was because, like, I mean, a lot of us thought the stop of the game was probably going to stop, but it was actually a great piece of refereeing. Yeah. Uh, he let the play go on. And Bernardo Silva, he's one of those players that he, you give him a sniff and he's going to he's gonna cut inside. He, he's got one of the quickest turning circles in football. Mm-hmm. And he just turned in, and that shot was exactly where you want it to be. Now, I think if a switched-on Courtois was on there. I think if Allison or Edison was in the same position, there, there's a good chance that they, they get a hand to it. Um, I don't know if they would have done anything because he, he absolutely pelted it. But um, you, you shouldn't really be beating somebody from outside the box on your keeper's side. I don't think. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a bit like it's not. It wasn't the worst of angles. It was a great shot. But yeah, I agree with you. That was definitely a um, a goalkeeping mm-hmm. error in my in my mind. When I saw it, I thought, "Oh, I would be really annoyed at Allison if he did that." But Allison often doesn't make the Allison's issues are not real uh, are not uh, shot stopping. So those are the, yeah. the the times that we don't normally see. Um, no, but yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Um, um, and then the the only other the other goal scorer I wanted to mention was Phil Foden. Um, now he's one of those players I've always been nervous of as a Liverpool fan because of the performances he's been able to put in in the biggest games. Um, and again, he's coming up he's coming up trumps with another performance. Um, there's, he's, he's one of those players that it's so... In the big games, he always seems to play for City. And it, that says something, because they've been the best player, uh, best team in the world, I think, for the last few years, on and off. Um, and it was super impressive. I mean, the entire attacking performance of the game was so impressive. It was, it was as a, as a defender, you know, you we're hopeful of making the Champions League final against one of these two teams. And I was really frightened because the both left-hand sides were attacking very strongly. Mm-hmm. And whilst I don't think Trent is actually as bad a defender as a lot of people say, I do think our tactics leave him open a lot of the time mm-hmm. to the attack on the left-hand side. Um, and Vinicius Jr. was on one side and, you know, City on the other one. You know, have we seen what Sterling or Foden can do on those? So it was, it was, a, it was very frightening. Oh, Foden always tortures, always tortures Trent, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> it's always a nightmare for Trent. It was, um, but at the same time, we also saw that fragility in defense. That's going to actually be, you know, the opening, Again, particularly Real Madrid. I actually, uh, I was not impressed at all with their defensive play. Yeah, as you mentioned before, Mares. He'll be he'll be kicking himself because whilst uh, it, whilst he was actually an outstanding pit player throughout the game, you can't you can't miss those chances in the big games like that. The one where he absolutely scores about five players by cutting inside, he'll be gutted that he didn't get that on target. Yeah, the one that, and the two one on ones he had at the end of the day, you've got to score at least one of those. So yeah. it was you know it's one of those games where there's a lot to take out of it. Um, but at the same time, I think most people watching it were very, very appreciative of what they were seeing. Yeah, and I don't know who I'd be happier being right now. Um, I think I think it's really, really even. Um, I think what what that reminded me of was the Galacticos, like the big name players doing it on the big stages. City are all like this cohesive unit that are just you know we'll pass a team to death we'll work together we'll, we'll break them down and then Real Madrid were just like individual moments of brilliance keeping them in the game uh, by by special players that you know the galactic players that um you know the Vinicius Junior the player of the future or 
Benzema, the the hidden gem of Real Madrid um, for for the last five years. Um, it's it's tough, and uh, yeah, completely agree with uh, with your analysis there. Um, look, well. We'll move on to the, the last part. We're gonna uh, we're just gonna quickly run over Liverpool uh, versus Real Madrid. Now, um, first off, what do you expect to happen? Um, and do, do you expect the game last night to affect uh, affect Liverpool or, or Villarreal at all? Either like just knowing that City are up or that that you know it was a goal fest. Do you think that will affect anybody uh, in that regard as well? Um, on the second point, I think this Liverpool team, what they've shown that they can do is they could, they just concentrate on their own game and they play one game at a time. I think that's you know, one of the abilities that Jürgen Klopp's kind of instilled in the team. They're a bit of a machine in that, in that sense. Um, in terms of the overall result, I think Liverpool will be, I, I, and as a Liverpool fan, you've got to be really confident. You're playing a team that whilst Unai Emery is proven himself to be one of the very best European managers, not only in the world, but actually his history is, it's, it's actually incredible, particularly with Sevilla and even taking Arsenal to a, a Europa League final. Um, you know, He's a cup specialist. He's a, yeah, a cup, cup specialist. specialist. Um, beating Bayern Munich, beating Juventus. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. Um, but at the same time, they're sixth or seventh in the league, in La Liga. Um, so, this Liverpool team who's been second favourite or you know, for just about most of the season to win this Champions League, they have to be extremely confident. If I was a betting man, I would expect Liverpool to have at some point a big blitz on them, probably early doors. Um, and I would, if I was a betting man, place a, you know, a, a couple goal lead bet on on, uh, on Liverpool. Do, do you uh, think that's uh, really important um, that we get a that you, Liverpool get a goal lead going to Villarreal because normally, actually, the last couple of finals that we've had or semi finals, sorry, um, we've been away first, which I prefer, and then home second. And I think this time it's home first and away second, which actually puts you in a bit of a, I think, a negative yeah. place if you don't do well in that first game. Yeah. So particularly because uh, the chances of going to extra time are so much higher now because of um, the away goals being eliminated. It does provide the advantage to the second team if it goes to extra time because they're playing in front of their own home crowd. Um, but what Liverpool do need, they need to go with a goal advantage because that's going to force Villarreal to come at them at some point, which then opens them up to the counter-attack of Salah, Mane, Diaz, you know, Jota. Um, but at the end of the day, they'll be Villarreal are going to be tight. They're going to be strong. And if I think if they can get out of Anfield with a one goal um, or draw, one goal disadvantage or draw, they're going to be very happy with the performance. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, I think it's really important for Liverpool to get a two goal gap, and that's going to really force Villarreal to come at them at some point, and that's going to create an open game. And in that case, I don't see Liverpool conceding two without scoring some themselves um so it's it's pretty important for that for that result for Liverpool, as a Liverpool fan that we do get a couple goal lead yeah heading out of Anfield and I think the fans are going to be up for it because they actually haven't had that big Anfield game so far in the the, the quarterfinals or the um the round of 16 simply because they've the results kind of been in hand going into these matches so I think the fans are going to be really up for it um whether they're going to be they're going to hit the legs is going to be an important thing. They've played a lot of minutes, these Liverpool players, um, and some of these Villarreal players have been really stepping up. So it's going to be really interesting. What What does the front three look like to you? Do you think it's Do you think you go strong and you play Diaz or do you play Jota? Um, do you give Mane a rest? Do you give Salah a rest? What do you think the the front three needs to be? At this At this stage of the season, there's no chance I see of Salah stopping or play, um, dropping out of the starting lineup. I think he's going to start almost every game as long as he's fit. I, I see the same for Mane. Uh, he's been in tight form in that number nine. What I had, what I do predict, because the other the other spot, Firmino, I think he's still, he's got a bit of an injury, a bit of a knock. So I yeah. think he's out of the running. Um, and I'd like to see him play, pro, you know, if there was a City final, I think he'd be very good against them. Yeah. But for me, uh, Luis Diaz, 
is the player that has to start in the left wing role. John is a bit about a bit out of form. He still scores, but it's clinical. Luis but he, he doesn't yeah. doesn't do as much off the ball. I, I look. I think there's just that X factor about Diaz, like uh, j- like just to the weekend that that dirty takedown that he did with <laughs> behind off. Oh, I, just, I, I, I I literally I was watching it with Saren and um I just said I couldn't believe my eyes. I thought we've never had a player like this. We've never ever ever had a player like this before. It's, it's even ridiculous. He had no right. Yeah, he had no right to 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 put that out there. And actually, his subbing on alongside Origi and Henderson really changed that game on the weekend. And I think that's something that Luis Diaz has actually really changed this Liverpool squad and the and the abilities that we have off the bench. Since he came in in January, I think he's a large part of why we're actually still do, going on these competitions. So I expect him to start, um, and I expect the midfield to be pretty similar to what we saw at Everton. And with um, Tia, I think Thiago is going to keep starting until he drops. Um, I think I think it's going to be a full strength eleven. Um, do you think because... Ka- Kaido will play them? Do you think he's our, Ka- our mainstay? I think Henderson is due a st- start because he was rested against Everton, um, and I think. At home, the Champions League, um, we're going to, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, hard, it's tough to predict what Klopp will do. I think, um, I, I the, get... yeah, the only reason I think Kaida might start is because we need, we want to absolutely, like, we're at home, so we have the advantage of attack. And I think, like, they'll yeah, be like sitting so... back and we'll want to break them down. And I think Kite is better at breaking teams down than Henderson sometimes. Um, yeah. So I, I would say my midfield three would be, Kaita, Fab, and Tiago um, for yeah. that for that game. That's a good point. I think one of the points that I, I was um, listening to on on another podcast was rivals. That Kaita, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like Kaita is able to. It's a Liverpool podcast, so yeah, <laughs> um, Kaita is, is actually has a better link up play with the number nine playing for Liverpool, mm. whereas um, Henderson tends to lean right towards Salah. So it's going to be interesting to see whether we, we cut, in, cut inside and we try to get Mane more involved in the goals or if actually they, they just say, hey, you know, we just set, we, we put Henderson on for the legs that he provides. Um, but at, at the end of the day, I think the main problem for Liverpool will be if they go in a bit arrogant because we've seen what this, this Villarreal side can do to arrogant, uh, arrogant teams and they're going to beat them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wouldn't actually expect this to be a very high scoring game um, due to, I think, the tightness that we'll see for Villarreal. Um, I don't think it's going to be a whitewash like some Liverpool fans think. Um, I don't, I, I, no, I don't they're see too, They're too risk. tight. They're too organised. They're way too yeah. tightened. I think the only way that could happen is if we get a, a couple of early goals and then Villarreal think, well, we're out of our depth here. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't see that happening. We've never really done. We've always struggled against. Um, oh gosh, the man that manager's team. Um, what's uh, his name? Unai Emery. Yeah, Un- Emery. We've always struggled yeah. against Emery. So, you know, we, we even like who was it in the Europa League semi final? Sevilla. Sevilla. That was yeah. Europa League. Europa League final. We lost yeah. to Sevilla. Yeah. Daniel Sturridge scored a worldie, and then we went three one. Right. Um, um, actually, I, I've read a stat. Liverpool have played against Unai Emery five times yeah. and one draw, one win. Uh, I don't know, three wins and one loss against them. But that one loss was in the Europa, in the European competition, which says a lot. The draw actually was a five-all draw against Arsenal in the League Cup. Um, I remember so, that game. So it was a bit of a mental one. But um, the he can he can really, I think in, in European Cup competition, there's, there's not many better at doing it than Unai Emery, so I would expect a really, really tight game. I don't think it will be anywhere near as exciting as the game we watched today, um, but it could just be just as interesting. Yeah, for sure. Look, uh, that's been a, a great little roundup there of the, the Champions League podcast, um, hoping to, to get you some. We'll try and maybe do a wrap-up one on Friday um, and uh, of the Liverpool game, um, and then uh, hopefully pre-match the next one. But uh, Joe, thanks so much for coming on today. And um, yeah, anything you want to finish off with? You'll never walk alone. Uh, but also, <laughs> I, 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 it's, good, it's good to finally get on and um, kind of share the points, particularly from uh, this side of the world and <laughs> on the Champions League. I know uh, poor old 
George and Paul Lee and Bayer don't get to watch much Champions League football nowadays. So, uh, yeah, definitely, you're definitely the resident expert compared to them for sure. Um, <laughs> all right, have a good uh, have a good day, everybody. Bye.